everybody, what's going on? Helmite here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. It's Tuesday and the patch notes for patch 9.2 have just been posted, and that means it's time for another patch note rundown. As always, I'll be going with the biggest changes in this week's patch, and letting you guys know what you can be looking forward to in the coming weeks. 9.20 is obviously a very small patch. There isn't a lot going on with this because it's in the middle of pro play. However, there are a bunch of very experimental, sort of mini rework changes going live in this patch for a couple of champions, so it's definitely still worth talking about. Let's go ahead and jump right into things here, starting with Blitzcrank, who is getting nerfed on this patch. His armor is going down and his armor growth is going down. Why is that? Because Riot gave him extra range on his hook in the last patch, when realistically they shouldn't have. And this is a problem Riot's had before, where they give a champion a buff that they didn't really need. The champion becomes way too strong, and then Riot ends up nerfing them in every other aspect other than the mechanic that they gave them. I think, if anything, Riot should be looking at nerfing Blitzcrank's hook range back to where it was before. But... I'll give them, okay, maybe you can look at it and nerf a couple other things and see if that helps. But I hope, hopefully they don't nerf Blitzcrank too significantly to compensate for a buff that he didn't really need in the first place. Anyways, moving on to Garen. Now, obviously, these are changes I'm very excited about. This entire change is intended to make Garen a little, feel a little bit better to play as and give him a little bit more cleanup around his mechanics and the things he does. Now, this is not the entire change list that was posted on the PBE almost a month ago or so, and especially it's not the change list that Restay originally proposed to Riot, Restay being a challenger Garen one-trick player um, who proposed a lot of these changes. Now, Riot have pulled back on some of the things that he proposed, but some of the ideas did slip through. So let's go ahead and talk about this real quick. Garen's attack speed growth is now going up. His health is going up as well, and his health growth has just been rounded down to 84 to make it a little bit easier on the math side of things. So generally a base stat buff. Perseverance is getting sl a slight rework. Now, the regeneration interruption is down to 7 seconds at all levels. So, this is a buff early and a nerf late, as it used to be 9 seconds in the early stages of the game. He doesn't have the double regen as well in his passive, but that was mostly invisible power in the first place, and no one ever really paid, uh, played around that. And the regeneration was nerfed early, however, it's significantly better in the later stages of the game. So, this generally means that Garen is going to be stronger later, uh, with his HP regen, uh, I guess maybe not because he does have the 7 second cooldown early in early stages of the game, so just a clean up in regards to how his passive works. Decisive Strikes cast time now scales with his attack speed, so it works like a lot of other basic attack resets. Courage has some significant changes here. Now, the bonus resistances he gets are overall reduced. He gets fewer for each minion kill, which means that he also has a smaller cap. So obviously he can, he caps out at 30 at 150 unit kills, so it takes him longer to hit his cap in the first place. But this is fine, that was a lot of invisible power that Garen had, so it makes sense that this would get nerfed. The, the activate was also changed. Now in the first 0.75 seconds of the activation, Garen doesn't gain 30% extra DR. Instead, he gets a shield for 10% of his maximum health. Now, I do like this because this is a little bit better to play against. Opponents are a lot more easily able to see, oh, where did my damage go? Oh, Garen got a huge shield, as opposed to before, where you're just like, why am I doing no damage to Garen? Because you don't realize he had 75% damage reduction for that first second or so. So, I actually do quite like this change. I think it's a lot better from a clarity standpoint. On to the meat of the changes. Judgment is getting some changes here. Now, the spins, he, ha he has a flat 7 spins, but he also gains a spin um, per 20% attack speed from items and levels. So, this doesn't necessarily mean that Garen has to build attack speed. If you look at how this scales, especially with his levels and his new attack speed scaling per level, this essentially means that Garen is getting a spin roughly every 6 levels or so. He does still end up slightly below where he would have been at level 16. But overall, this does mean that if Garen does opt into some attack speed items, like he potentially may want to, but ordinarily wouldn't be rewarded for doing so, he will be able to get more spins per second, which really does help the damage that he does with Judgment. The damage per spin was also reduced um, in order to compensate for the fact that Garen can build attack speed now and basically gain a ton more extra spins. Now, I do sort of dislike this. This does mean that Garen really needs attack speed, at least somewhat, in order to do damage, but I'm not necessarily frustrated with this change. The bonus damage is also down. It's now only 25% to the nearest enemy as opposed to... 
or sorry, it used to be 33% if he was only hitting a single enemy. Now it's 25% bonus damage to the nearest enemy, which does give good Garen players a little bit more of a skill window in order to get in close to the champion in the middle of the minion wave and get that bonus damage on them. And they're also now six spins before the shred as opposed to four. So especially at level one, Garen will have to basically land all of his spins in order to get the shred. However, all of these nerfs are compensation for this one buff. It now grants stacks of conquer on each spin. This means that Garen can stack Conquer like nobody's business, gain a ton of free damage, get that true damage going, get the healing going, and that's why the rest of this ability has been nerfed. So, this is a big change though, and I know a lot of people are screaming at my screen already, why would you buff Garen like this, Riot? Honestly, it felt really bad as Garen being able, basically being the only Juggernaut that can't even use Conquer because it's such a non-bow with what his kit wants to do. So the fact that this is here, and it's not like they haven't nerfed the rest of his kit around it, Judgment really took a big power hit in this patch in order to compensate for the fact that now he can stack Conquer. This is a huge change. I'm not sure how power uh, neutral or positive it's going to be, but I'm definitely excited to at least play around with it. And moving on to Demacian Justice, very small um, quality of life buffs here. It now grants vision of the target for one second, so it won't cancel if they you know enter a bush as you're in the middle of casting it. The damage was reduced. But it's because the damage is now true damage as opposed to magic damage, which means that things like Hex Drinker won't block it anymore. Building magic resistance doesn't help you. Demacia Justice is now true damage, putting it in line with most of the other executes in the game. Overall, I'm excited to play with these Garen changes. I think they are quite interesting. Uh, generally, I think these are maybe power neutral to positive, but we'll have to see how these are going to land when he hits live. He might be horrendously broken. Who knows? Moving on to Ivern. Just a real quick note here, he is now a permanently ranged champion. His basic attack range is now 475. He is a ranged champion, so he can proc everything involving ranged, etc., etc. Now, this is actually a small... It's not necessarily straight a buff. Um, as Ivern, the play he can make before where shielding himself, hitting a root collar, and then using his melee attack range to pull himself in range for the shield pop, that's no longer an option for Ivern anymore. So it's not straight a buff. I think generally it is going to still be a power-up for Ivern, so hopefully making him a little bit more approachable and a little bit better in the jungle now that he doesn't have to be in melee range to trade against a lot of other early junglers. Lissandra's getting some small buffs here. Her armor is going up, and the ratios on Iceborne Subjugation and Ring of Frost have also been increased in order to make her a bursty engage mage. Now, this doesn't really impact her pro power because this is mostly just doing more of what she already wanted to do in pro play which isn't enough after the Aftershock nerfs, but it's nice if you're playing Lissandra in solo queue. Pantheon's getting some small nerfs. If you haven't noticed at Worlds, he's, I believe, 100% banned. This champion has not been allowed to be played at Worlds, and it's because he is really, really nuts given how strong he is in the early stages of the game. So while these nerfs do look small, they are significant in that this is his Pantheon's first max, and it reduces the damage he deals in the early stages of the game, which are very important in high skill ranked games. Hopefully this doesn't nerf him too bad for solo queue, but I do expect to Pantheon to need additional nerfs in the future. Moving on to Kiana, she's, they're hitting her trade damage, especially at level 3, because she's able to just kind of annihilate somebody in the early stages of the game, similar to how Pantheon does it. Um, Edge of Ishtal's base damage has been reduced to compensate. It's down by 20 damage at level 1, which is a huge nerf. Kiana will not be doing that much damage in the early stages of the game. Should make her feel a little less oppressive to lane against. Moving on to her second sort of pseudo rework with Shaco. Um, Riot are really trying to make sure that Shaco feels a little bit better and that he can do more damage throughout the game as opposed to waiting until the late stages of the game for the insta one shot from stealth. Bunch of changes here. His attack damage has been reduced as has the attack damage growth, but that's because he's getting a bunch of damage from additional places. Backstab now deals an additional uh, damage from behind, and this damage can crit, so Shago can really get some damage down if he procs his passive, and Two Shift Poison can also deal bonus damage from behind, so if Shago can get behind you, auto attack Two Shift Poison really can layer on the damage there. Deceive Stealth Duration is down, but the cooldown has been reduced as well. He no longer reduces the cooldown on Deceive when he exits invisibility and deals a basic attack. But the damage on that basic attack has been increased, and when striking from behind, Deceive is guaranteed to critically strike for 130% damage. So again, this is really going to increase the amount of damage Shaco can do from behind, especially with just Deceive and 2-Shift Poison. 
Jack in the Box is getting some small quality of life changes here. The boxes can now attack multiple enemies in an area of effect range. The single target damage hasn't been changed, but it now has an AoE damage value. And it now spheres for two seconds on all non-champions and doesn't um, increase their movement or it decreases their movement speed by significantly more than it used to. So these cha the um, jungle monsters will stay in your box for a lot longer before they get feared out of it. So these are all very nice quality of life changes for Jack in the Box. Two Ship Poison is back to being magic damage. Its damage has generally been increased, and it now has execute damage that's 50% increase on targets below 30% health. So again, this is really something where Shaco can pop up behind you and just deal a ton of damage all at once by getting that crit, by getting all the bonus damage off a of backstab and the Two Ship Poison execute. So I do quite like this. I do think it gives Shaco a little bit better ways to actually secure kills as opposed to just kind of do damage and then not be able to do anything else. Finally, onto Hallucinate. Boxes now trigger immediately after your clone gets killed, which is huge. The damage has been overall decreased in order to compensate, though, but because it's essentially this big AoE fear, that is still going to be quite powerful. The fear duration was normalized to one second, so a buff early, nerf late. And the boxes, because they are AoE in line with the Jack in the Box changes earlier, the box it has now have AoE damage, which I do actually quite like this change. I think it gives Shaco a little bit more flexibility. It means that when his clone dies, he doesn't feel like, wow, this did nothing for me. It spawned a bunch of boxes that the enemies walked away from. So we'll see. I think this is overall a power positive change for Shaco. I think he'll be significantly better in the early stages of the game. And more empowered to do things with champions early on in the game. So, well, again, with the gear and changes, we'll have to see how they land. But I am quite happy with where these are at. Moving on to Victor, which is our third sort of pseudo rework for this patch. Right are trying to give him more exciting augments for his W and his R. And decreasing some of his mana dependency. So, first of all, Siphon Power's shield is now based on his level and AP rather than his maximum mana, which is a lot nicer. It means he doesn't have to build mana, and it's also a nerf for the top lane victors building Iceborne Gauntlet, so I will always appreciate that. Gravity Field's augment is now called Magnetize. Direct hits, which I'm translating as if, you, if the enemy is directly in the Gravity Field as it activates, it now slows enemy by 20% for one second, which... Uh, it actually says does not proc on Arctic, so this just means hitting enemies slows them. This seems odd, but hey, I'm not complaining. It does give Victor a little bit more room to really get the stun on enemies in the gravity field. He did lose the mini Orianna pull into the center, but this still seems pretty decent. And Chaos Storm has a bunch of good changes. It will stick around and chase champions even after Victor dies, and it can move over terrain. The tick cadence was, is reduced to one second, but it also has six ticks, so it'll generally be able to deal damage faster than it used to. Accordingly, the damage per tick has been reduced. This looks like a big nerf, but it's because it's ticking twice as fast as before, so if you do the math, it ends up being the exact same amount of damage as it used to do. And the Augment Perfect Storm movement speed now gives it 25% faster movement speed. So a lot of really nice quality of life changes for Victor that should help make him feel a little bit better to play. And that's really it for the highlights today, guys. We do have those three mini reworks to look forward to on top of a couple other changes. So this is really interesting. Looking forward to 9.20 to hit live. Obviously not going to affect pro play at all. They're locked on patch 9.19 for the rest of Worlds, but will be exciting to see how this shapes up in solo queue. Let me know which changes you're most excited for down in the comment section below. Always enjoy hearing your thoughts. If you enjoyed today's video, go ahead and leave a like. And if you really enjoyed today's video, consider subscribing. I upload a video every Monday, Friday, and on patch days like today as well. And if you're looking for Gravel Lantern content, you can check out my blog, link down in the description. I upload an article just about each and every single day for your enjoyment. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all later.